Hi guys, it's Chris uh, from Novation at Soundmit in Turin and here I am with our distributors in Italy, uh, Midiware and um, here uh, for your Ask Audio delectation I have the brand new Launchpad. So we have the Launchpad X here and also the Launchpad Mini Mark III. So these um, have just recently been announced and we've had a number of feature upgrades that we've added to the already very popular um, Novation Launchpad. So the Launchpad Mini, the first thing that you can notice about this is that we've now gone full RGB um, with the pads. Previously, we obviously here we had three colors. We had red, green, and yellow, but now full RGB. Um, and really, the Launchpad Mini has been given its own position in the range. Um, again, previously, Launchpad, uh, Launchpad Mark II and Launchpad Mini Mark II had similar functionality. But actually, we've kind of differentiated those a little bit now. So really, the Launchpad um, Mini here is, well, we're saying made to launch. And really, this is a clip launching device. Um, obviously, we have a nice, strong connection here with Ableton Live. And we have Ableton Live up on the screen in the session window. And of course, if you look at, well, in fact, both of the launch pads here, we can see our nice red column, yellow columns, pink columns, blue columns. And obviously, we're getting full color feedback from our session window in Ableton. So the usual stuff applies to launch clips. I just simply press here. And obviously, everything is going to launch nicely in sync in my Ableton Live set. So this is really a perfect way if you're going to play live to really sort of take control over your live performances within the session world. Now, in addition to this, we've got this function at the bottom. Well, actually, I should just mention, we've still got our scene launchers at the side here. So if I um, you know, arrange my music so that everything I want to launch is on a single line, I can just press a single line and, of course, launch these clips um, all together at the same time as and when I want. So that's really useful. It lets you structure your tracks into various different sections and run through them. Now at the bottom, the bottom button here says stop solo mute and that's exactly what it is. So if I go into stop here, this is the red page, um, I can basically stop the clips. Now the nice difference is here that we had this previously on the Launchpad Mini, but really we couldn't also use this space up at the top for launching clips. So for now, we have stop clips and launch clips on the same page, which is a nice addition. Also, if I launch a scene here, I tap through and I go into solo mode. And of course, solo is going to solo a particular track and just isolate that from the rest of it. Um, and again, if we look at the, um, look at the setup here on, on, on Ableton, we can see that that particular track is now isolated on its own. Um, finally, if I go to mute here, I've now got mute switches for each of the tracks on my grid. But once again, we're not losing any of this real estate here. Now, that's essentially the control that we have with Ableton. Um, you know, it's, it's basic, a, a, basically um, a direct control over that session window. But I also have these three buttons here. And we have a drum page, a keys page, and also a user page as well. Now, these are what we're calling custom pages. We've labeled them drums and keys, so you've got a nice drum layout. You've also got a nice four octave controller keyboard here, and you can see this is laid out just like a chromatic keyboard. Um, but each of these can be repurposed, and they can be repurposed using our special piece of software, the Novation Components. So, if I open up Novation Components, so I'll just uh, minimize here. And, oh, I just, I'm going to link directly to my phone so that I can just get a, an internet connection. So <laughs> just bear with me one second. This is great, uh, great viewing for everyone. Thank you very much for your patience. So I'm just going to go and log on to my phone here. Oh, not that one. I'll go to, there it is, Calkey phone. Thank you. So we're now connected in. And I can just go down here now to my Novation Components site here. Now this is the standalone version. Um, and here you can see Novation Components is basically the management system for all our devices. So we have Summit, we have Peak, Base Station 2 and all the usual things here. But also let's click here for Launchpad Mini. Now we go into the Components software and I can go to create a custom mode. For me, this is the really powerful aspect of the Launchpad Mini, is the fact that we can completely repurpose each of these custom modes that we have. So here I've just dragged in a chromatic keyboard. Perhaps I want to add I don't know, maybe we'll go for a scale mode here as well. Uh, maybe I want to add a couple of faders. So we'll put a fader here, put a fader here. Um, perhaps I want to add some program change controls as well. So I'll just put some little switchings in here. 
I can also choose MIDI notes, individual MIDI notes, or even CC controls as well. Just drag them in. Oh, I've just gone over the horizontal fader, so we'll just bring that back on here. Where are you? Oh no, that was the scale, I beg your pardon. So my trackpad skills are not that great. But anyway, you get the idea. If I want to, then I can go here to my fader and say, actually, let's change the color of this. Let's change the controller number. So we'll put that on a different value from this one. Maybe I'll change that to a pink. Maybe I want this CC control to be a toggle switch so I can turn effects on or off using MIDI Learn within Ableton. Um, I can maybe go to here and say, okay, let's change the MIDI channel for that. The scale, well, actually it's a minor, but I want a blue scale. I want, I want that on MIDI channel three. And we have here the chromatic keyboard and that's, yeah, on MIDI channel one. Maybe I want to change the colors around a little bit so it's a bit easy to manage. So let's change the root notes here to orange and then the scale notes maybe to yellow and so on and so forth. So basically I've created my own custom mapping there. I hit center launch pad and I can choose now which of the three pages, the drums, the keys or the user. I'm going to go to, let's, well, we're on the keys page. So this is number two, hit that and hey presto. Now I have my own personalized controller system. So really the components is like a little modular kind of, okay, I want faders, I want buttons, I want MIDI notes, I want scales, and I can use this to repurpose any of the custom pages that I've got in the Launchpad Mini uh, Mark III. So uh, this is Launchpad Mini Mark III, but of course next to it we have the slightly bigger one, and this of course is now the uh, Launchpad X. Now it's 10 years since the original launch of Launchpad. Uh, Launchpad X obviously marks that. Um, but also, one thing that's quite interesting is, in those 10 years, the Launchpad, which has been incredibly popular, has really kind of remained the same product. The feature set has remained the same. Cosmetically, it's changed quite a bit, and we've obviously added RGB and that sort of thing. But really now, on the Launchpad X, we've kind of really pushed what we can do with this device a lot further. So, here we are in the session page, and just as we had before with the Launchpad Mini for launching sessions, that's absolutely fine. But also, if I press this button here again, the session button, that opens up access to these mixer controls. So for example, now if I want to start to change volumes, I can go to my volume page and just make volume adjustments here. Now, you may see here, if I press very lightly, we get a very slow travel on that fade. If I press hard, it's going to be immediate. That obviously tells us we have some very nice pressure sensitivity here. They're actually velocity sensitive pads, and indeed, they're actually um, uh, polyphonic aftertouch pads as well. This is a similar kind of uh, uh, sort of layout, if you look, or system that we have for the Launchpad Pro. Now, also, you might see some are slightly less lit. Now, this might be a bit difficult to see with the actual fader, but basically what I've got now is four positions for each of these buttons. So previously, I would have had eight positions, let's say, for the fader, but now I have 32 because each of these pads also has four positions and that gives me just a little bit more fine control over the position of the faders. So this is the volume page, but of course then we have controls for our pans. Um, and we can go left and right, and again they're, uh, le they're sensitive to the pressure. Um, I have send controls, so if I have any effect sends, they can all be uh, um, accessed here. Um, well, send A and send B can be accessed directly from the unit. And once again, if I go to the stop clip, like we had with the Launchpad Mini here, I now have access to all of the launching clips in the session window alongside being able to stop clips in that same environment. It's the same for the mute, the solo, and then finally we'll go to the record arm, and the record arm of course allows me to select directly a track that I want to record into. So I'm going to record arm this first track, and now um, I can segue nicely into this mode, which is the note mode. And now you can see here I have a drum grid, and essentially this is locked into a drum rack here on Ableton. So if I just double click here, you'll see I have a drum rack, and I can trigger and launch each of those individual samples. So this is a really nice uh, kind of easy environment to work within the drum rack page. Now, you'll see here we've got a big record button. And of course I can use that to overdub and record into any clips that I might have created. But equally, and it's labelled labeled Capture MIDI. So what does that mean? Well, let's say I'm sitting in the studio and I get a lovely beat going. You know, as you do when you're practicing, you just kind of get this nice little flow and everything goes. And then you think, right, I really want to record that. So you go through all this, the rigmarole of setting up the record, hit record, get yourself sat in place, you miss your cue, oh, you start playing, or you get all flustered, it all goes out of the window. 
but since Ableton Live 10, it's had this capture MIDI feature, and what that means now is I can press and hold capture MIDI, and it will remember what I played previously. So this, of course, is a feature that we have in Ableton, but it also means that you can see here now, um, it's remembered that beat that I originally created, and but didn't record. So that's the drum rack page, but if we go back to here now, and I'll just, I'll just uh, basically uh, record enable this track, go to note mode, and you can see that's a completely different layout. So we have two different styles of layouts for the note mode, and this now is presenting me with a keyboard with which to play over the grids. Now, at the moment, this looks quite interesting, so let's just go back and switch off the scale mode. So here now, you see, I've got all of these lights and these gaps in between. This is actually representing a scale to me and all the notes that are not lit are essentially notes that are not within that scale. So all the lit notes, the purple and the, uh, the purple notes are the octaves, the blue notes are the notes held within a specific scale. If I press and hold this, I go into the note menu and I can choose my different scale here. I can also transpose that using this, which is basically like a keyboard. We have the two black notes and the three black notes, then all the white notes here. So let's go to C minor. There we go. Oh, by the way, I can change the MIDI channel here as well if I want to. But let's stick with that. We'll C minor here, and I'll turn that on. Now when we go back to note mode, you see all of the wrong notes, in inverted commas, the notes that don't exist in that scale, have now been removed, and I just am presented with a nice, easy, blank slate of, um, of control over the scales. Again, if I press and hold, I also have this switch here, which allows me to set an overlap. So if I switch here to a note three overlap, Basically now I can play a whole scale just using the three fingers here. So that makes it a very customizable way of being able to input your notes directly into Ableton. Now alongside that we have our custom pages. Launchpad Mini Mark III has three custom pages. The Launchpad X here has four custom pages. And in exactly the same way we can go and configure it as we like using the component software. And once again if I go here Go to Launchpad X, um, just here, create custom mode, and just very quickly I'll throw in a couple of faders, so we've got one fader, two fader, um, maybe I'll just change the colour on this, we'll go red, and we'll change the, uh, the CC number, centre Launchpad X, which page, well we're on to page three here, let's go there, and now I have my two faders. And of course I can populate four different pages with this as well. So this is... Uh, the, the, the new launch pads, we've had the launch pad, uh, launch pad Mini Mark 3, the launch pad X. As you can see, there's quite a number of kind of changes to the way that they behave now with the Ableton Live software. But one thing I really want to mention as well is that these are MIDI controllers. And essentially, you know, you can use these and repurpose these in the custom modes to control whatever it is you want to. So for example, here in my user mode, I've actually created a mapping here, and this is for my Octatrack, and um, I'm a big, big fan of the Electron Octatrack, but one thing that kind of is a bit frustrating often is changing the volumes for all the eight different audio tracks you have. So here's very simple, an eight bank fader for controlling uh, the Octatrack. And I can send it out using the USB to MIDI host or through a, uh, an audio interface on your computer, and it's a controller that I can dedicate to pretty much any piece of hardware. So that's it, a very quick look at both new launch pads, Launchpad X and Launchpad Mini Mark III. Um, and these are gonna be available in stores uh, from, from, from right about now. <laughs> Thanks very much.